And again, the portrait he gives of the rabbi, the physical portrait, is interesting because we know very little about what the rabbi looked like. There's no pictures of this guy. And the picture, or the description by Opatoshu, became the standard representation of the Kotzka Rebbe, so much so that, I don't know, 17 or 18 years later, another Yiddish novelist named Shulamash, who was quite famous because he was translated all over the place, and his books were bestsellers, huge bestsellers, in English and other languages all through the 30s and 40s and 50s. Shulamash wrote a book, uh, in English it's called Salvation, uh, also about Chassidim in Poland, this was kind of his penance uh, when World War II and the Holocaust happened. Uh, Ash had been highly critical of Jewish society and civilization, like a lot of Yiddish writers. And it's basically like, this should all be wiped out. But they didn't quite mean wiped out in the sense of wiped out. So a lot of the Yiddish writers started to write these retrospective novels about, uh, you know, piety and simplicity and all of that. Uh, you know, Ash wasn't the only one because they felt kind of guilty about having, you know. Isn't it, isn't it possible then that that's one of the reasons why this is what you're terming a lost classic? Maybe this is why it got lost in the, and now, oh, I'm and now sure. is a reasonable time? Yeah, to, I, I think that may actually have had a lot to do with it is the translation, like I said, wasn't great. It was published by the Jewish Publication Society, with whom there is nothing wrong. I'm not saying anything against them, but the name of the publisher tells you who they're going to be. The Jewish Publication. Yeah, Society. who they're going to be reaching out to. Sholomash was published by Knopf, I think. Uh, Alfred A. Knopf, you know, today part of Random House, you know, major mainstream publisher. And I think that, yeah, definitely made a very big difference. But so, yeah, I, I think that probably had a lot to do with it is this was not, the people that recognized it and got off on it could read the original. The other people, I think it just didn't jibe at all with what they figured Polish Jewish life was or had been. Uh, you know, I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. You know, because Opatosha, like I said, had an immense reputation in his, you know, during his lifetime. He's not like, he's, he was prominent in Yiddish literature. He's not like an overlooked genius as far as people who can read Yiddish go. Uh, everybody knows him, but also, and I, I find it odd, because he's not been translated, he doesn't occupy the place on the curriculum, say, of Yiddish university courses that you would expect a writer like this to have. Okay, admittedly, there's also, you know, the usual Yiddish problems of getting actual books and things like that. But, you know, if you're going to read a Yiddish novel, Shalom Aleichem is a great novelist. There's no question about it. He's not typical. His influence, he's so, uh, he's so unique that he had no influence on Yiddish literature. So so then, in your opinion, with Opatashu's voice missing from 20th century Jewish it's, literature, what's, it's like what's take, missing then? Well, it's like missing Hemingway or Faulkner from American literature. And this is a guy, he's about the same age as those guys, uh, maybe a little bit older than Hemingway. He's roughly the same age, same generation, similar literary sensibility. I'm not saying that he and Faulkner would have agreed about stuff. But I don't know if what Opatosh's opinion of Faulkner was as a writer, but he would have, even if he hated it, he would have hated it because he got it, right? He would have understood what was going on in a book like As I Lay Dying or something. You know, they, they had the same influences, basically, the same broad European influences. Uh, and he was, you know, that's what you're missing, though, because he was that important. All the books I mentioned before, uh, I.J. Singer's novels, uh, Shulam Ash's historical novels, which came later in his career, 
Uh, he was an established writer by the time Opatoshi came along, but he'd been writing more or less contemporary stuff, stuff set at the time, generally about low-class people in big cities uh, and criminals. Uh, Opatoshu's response to that, his first book, was about Jewish criminals in New York. And Shulam Aleichem sent him a letter saying, this is great, this is fantastic, you should only write about New York, or you should only write about America. So Opatoshu's immediate response to a letter of praise from, you know, the guy who really is the, the Yiddish equivalent of Shakespeare and Charles Dickens put together, is to go and write a book as deeply rooted in the old country as he can. Mm -hmm. And then there were a couple of intervening things that, you know, short, he wrote a lot of short stories. There were some short stories and novellas set also in, in Poland and in sort of the backwoods uh, that intervened between those. But, you know, that's what he went uh, and did. But the historical novels, like I was saying, of Shalom Ash, of I.J. Singer, of even Chaim Grada, who wrote the yeshiva, and was not even born until 1910, which in Yiddish writer terms is, you know, he's, he's David Lee Roth, he's a child. Uh, <laughs> even his stuff couldn't have happened the way it did, couldn't have been written the way it was without Alpatoshu's influence. You know, he was one of those writers that affected everybody, even if they didn't know it, because he to a large degree just changed what a Yiddish novel could be. And he was widely, widely read. This is the other thing is, uh, in Polish of Elder in Yiddish went into multiple editions very, very quickly. I think it was 17 editions or something, which, you know, it was Yiddish, but each edition was probably four copies, but no, but I mean, he's, he was well known. He sold a lot. Uh, and it's, you know, like I said, it's not like, yeah, well, it was the bestseller schlock of its day. It was in the same way as, as people like Hemingway would occasionally lock out and sell a lot of books. That's what he was doing. The way, you know, liter you get the occasional literary novelist who, who does sell well. And that's what Opatoshu was, at least with that particular book. I don't think all his other books his other books didn't necessarily have that kind of reach, but this one most certainly did.